and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. Today we are going to be talking about my more recent favorite foundations for summertime and it's from a smaller brand called Yensa Beauty and it is their BC foundation. It is a full coverage foundation with an SPF of 40. It features what they refer to as their eight super black essences which is basically eight extracts and whatnot from eight superfoods that are things like black rice, black tea, shiitake mushrooms, which they claim can provide skin benefits through continued use. And they are owned by the same people who own the skincare brand Pure Lease, which you've probably heard me talk about if you've been on my channel for a while. And they have sent me products in the past, but I did purchase this foundation after receiving a small sample of it last year from them. First, I'm gonna give you a short summary of why I love this foundation, and then we are gonna break down a bunch of ingredients and how they function in this particular formula. So personally, I love this foundation because it you do get a lot of coverage, but it feels very lightweight. You do not need very much of it. I can use a pump and cover almost my entire face to get a very medium coverage. Two pumps for full coverage, no more than that for me at least. It also doesn't give you a super oily look. It's more of a healthy glow, more of a satin finish, And I, but I do usually set this with a powder as I do with all of my foundations. So this foundation works well with a lot of medium coverage concealers that I use, and it also wears well throughout the day. Let us dive into the ingredients. So after water, the first ingredient is cyclopentasiloxane. Cyclopentasiloxane is a volatile silicone. Volatile means that it's gonna evaporate easily at room temperature. You find this in a lot of foundations, especially those are more matte because it does evaporate away. But it being a silicone, it allows it to spread more evenly over the skin. So this is why I really like this ingredient over something like isododecane, which dries a lot faster and gives you less time to work with it. Having it more based in cyclopentasiloxane is gonna help it spread out on the skin, but evaporate away so you don't look greasy. So the next three ingredients are gonna be sunscreen ingredients. And those sunscreen ingredients are titanium dioxide at 9.4%, ethyl hexyl methoxycinnamate at 7.4%, and zinc oxide at 7.0%. Titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, most people know them as mineral or physical sunscreens, but more appropriately, we can call them inorganic sunscreen. In, a, in the chemistry world, something being organic simply means that it contains carbon atoms. In this case, these obviously don't. They're made up of two molecules, oxygen and either zinc or titanium. And the reason why I'm gonna use this term over something like a physical sunscreen, although these molecules do reflect UV light, it isn't a super large percentage of them. So more, they do work very similar to chemical sunscreens in which they absorb the UV rays and convert it to heat. The benefit for these inorganic sunscreens is that they do absorb a wide range of UV light. UV light is on a spectrum. The ones that we are most familiar with are UVA and UVB. UVA associate with aging. UVB you associate with a sunburn and leading to skin cancer. So these can absorb over the UVA and UVB range. Sometimes with organic sunscreens, they don't absorb over this wide range. They more prominently absorb in either the UVA or the UVB range. For instance, the ethyl hexyl methoxycinnamate in here primarily absorbs in the UVB range. You couldn't just use that ingredient alone for SPF protection and expect to be protected from UVA rays. And this formula will give you an SPF of 40 if you are able to use the two milligrams per centimeter squared of your face, anywhere from a third to a half a teaspoon for the entirety of your face. If you've watched my sunscreen video before, you'll know it's very unlikely you are going to reach this amount with a foundation. I will link that up above, but the extra SPF protection is not going to harm you. In addition, the titanium dioxide is going to help with the coverage of the foundation. Titanium dioxide is also used as a colorant, a white colorant. So in this case, it's gonna help you give more coverage in this formula. The next ingredient is cyclohexasiloxane. It's very similar to cyclopentasiloxane, also a volatile silicone. It's gonna help it spread over your face and it'll also evaporate as well. The next ingredient is caprylic caprate triglyceride and this is gonna act as an emollient, meaning it's gonna give a soft feeling to the skin. It is also a very lightweight emollient, so it's not gonna leave you feeling greasy, but it is gonna give a soft feeling to the skin. Next is butylene glycol. This is a humectant, but it is lightweight. 
For comparison, the density of butylene glycol is very similar to that of water, whereas glycerin is about 1.26. So the same volume of glycerin is gonna feel a lot heavier than that of butylene glycol. And humectants act by drawing water into themselves, and this in turn is gonna help keep your skin hydrated. And I like butylene glycol in products because it is so lightweight. So next is Cetyl PEG PPG-10 slash 1 dimethicone. So this is kind of a multifunctional ingredient. So because it is a silicone, it's gonna help the foundation spread, but this also acts as an emulsifier. An emulsifier is what you use to mix two substances that wouldn't normally mix. Think oil and water. In this case, cyclopentasiloxane and cyclohexasiloxane are not gonna mix with that water layer, and therefore anything that is dissolved individually into those two layers will not mix. So this compound is gonna be attracted to both of these things, and that is gonna help them combine. So that way you're not gonna have your foundation separating over time. And this is also gonna help keep the colorant suspended in that foundation so you don't have that separation of the pigment as well. And the next ingredient, sorbitan, sesquiloate, that was totally butchered, but you know, I butcher them too, is also gonna function as an emulsifier. And if you Google this ingredient, there is something I want to address based on a study that I saw. So this study showed that contact dermatitis occurred in 10% of the people in this study when using this particular ingredient. And this was a study of 112, which means 11 of these people developed skin irritation during a patch test using this ingredient. Usually these studies utilize a larger amount of the ingredient at very high concentration, which is not what would be put into products. And that's why it's important to not use the data from one study to completely write off an ingredient. This is what happened with parabens. There was one study that showed it found in breast cancer tissue, but there was a whole slew of problems with the study, including not having a control group, not accurately representing their findings. And although the study was extremely flawed and eventually got redacted, and it damaged people's perception of parabens to where customers were no longer wanting to buy products that contained parabens, even though Parabens have been shown time and time again to be safe, and now due to this aversion that customers have towards parabens, we're seeing a lot more recalls due to microbial growth. We are seeing more skin irritation from these newer preservatives that are out there. So although this one study can show that maybe they can cause irritation, even in the study itself, they do show this just means that this needs further investigating. So I did want to address that because if you Google this ingredient, that pops up. But I don't have any problem with this ingredient based on the science that I have seen right now. Ethyl hexyl palmitate acts like an emollient and is also a pigment wetting agent. The colorants don't really blend well on their own, so you kind of have to wet them with something like the ethyl hexyl palmitate in order to incorporate them properly into the foundation. So the next ingredient is arbutin, and this is gonna function more as an active skincare ingredient. It works as a brightening ingredient to help with dark spots. I don't personally buy makeup products for their skincare benefits, but if you were to use this daily, you might see some benefit from this due to the arbutin. The Ordinary currently sells a formula that has arbutin at 2%. This one might be 2%, it might be a little less. I have a feeling it's somewhere in between one and 2%. And like I said, it's more of a skincare benefit as opposed to helping the foundation function. There are a few more ingredients, but they're at a very low percentage and a lot of their a lot of the reason for them being in there is to either thicken the formula or help spreadability. So we're just gonna kind of skip over those for right now and that's gonna bring us to phenoxyethanol. So phenoxyethanol has pretty much become the most widely used preservative I have seen in makeup and skincare products. And it's gonna be used at a maximum of 1%. If you see this on an ingredients list, you're gonna know that that's gonna be at 1%. Meaning anything below that is either at 1% or less of a concentration. Anything below 1%, they can list in any order. But that phenoxyethanol is a very, very good way to determine the 1% line. Things above it might also be at 1%, but for the ease of customers, phenoxyethanol is a good way to figure out where the 1% line is. So if we look past this phenoxyethanol, a lot of the ingredients after this point are either extracts or oils or some form of essential oil. It's either gonna be in there to help with fragrance. I don't think that's really the case in this foundation. There's not a strong smell to it or because of the advertised skincare benefits of these ingredients. In terms of benefiting the skin, I have a lot of skepticism 
if the, they would be beneficial at this concentration. Could these extracts and oils have a benefit to the skin at these concentration? Sure, potentially, but that's probably more anecdotal and not based on a lot of scientific evidence. Therefore, I'm not gonna hold a lot of weight to it. That being said, on the other side, special oils, extracts, these things can cause reactions to the skin, but they are at such a low percentage, that is also not a big concern in my mind. If I get a reaction to something, I avoid it, but in this case, I don't have an adverse skin reaction to it, therefore, I will continue to use it and not be concerned about these extracts and oils in there. In terms of extracts and essential oils, if it's very, very low in a formula, I don't pay it any mind either way. So I hope you enjoyed breaking down this ingredients list with me and learning about my new go-to summer foundation. If you want to pick up this foundation, I will leave a third-party affiliate link down below, meaning if you do purchase anything using this link, I will get a little bit of a kickback, but I do not get directly paid by the brand. If you want to learn more about the ingredients in your makeup and skincare, do not forget to click the subscribe button down below to catch more videos. Please double check if you are subscribed. And let me know what your favorite foundation is to wear in the summer. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!